how many people in history will there ever be again like Barry? It's probably the goat of chemistry. Yeah, I mean, if, if Jordan did chemistry, you'd probably get a Barry phenotype. So this is, this is really remarkable. I went into Barry's office about 10.30 this morning. I, Barry, congratulations. And, and he went to the blackboard. And all of a sudden, he's giving me this lecture about sulfur chemistry. And, and I'm just going, isn't there anything else recording. on your mind? <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so so but this, is, this is our colleague. This is pure Barry. Got the Nobel Prize. Hey, can I show you some data? I'm working on the next one. And finally, American chemist Barry Sharpless, who was here already in 2001 receiving a Nobel Prize for his work on purely catalyzed oxidation reactions. He is now one of the five persons ever who has received the prize more than once. I've been thinking about Bob Dylan in the 60s and how, you know, he would go off on these weird tangents and people would say, oh, he's going off the deep end, what happened to Bob Dylan? And, and then later people would realize that he was just like two or three steps ahead of the crowd, his thinking and his, you know, he was pushing the envelope. And that's exactly what Barry does here, you know, in his science. When he first gets an idea, they're like, what is that? What's he thinking? The creativity doesn't let him stop. But we've learned to appreciate that and to, to be patient with, you know, how long it takes us to catch up. <laughs> but uh, you know, Bob Dylan only has one Nobel Prize, so. <laughs> Prizes aren't what I'm doing science for, I'm for, uh, what for better or for worse. So I have to do it. It's kind of a compulsion. It's kind of a risk-taking operation. And I like to find an area where the ideas can be uh, can lead you into something more dramatic and well, nothing like Einstein, but Einstein said it well, and that is if at first an idea, the idea is not absurd, then there's no hope for it. Around the turn of the millennium, both Morton Meldahl and Barry Sharpless discovered a very robust chemical reaction that worked in this very straightforward way. In a sense, it just said click, the sober click. Barry Sharpless called this type of robust chemistry click chemistry. And the reaction is sometimes called the click reaction. He envisaged that even rather complex structures could be assembled with such reactions. This is the second Nobel Prize he got from Scripps. Most of Nobel laureates once they get the prize, they will do something else. Uh, but Barry continued uh, to um, pursue his insights in science. And I think this has a, a very special meaning uh, to Scripps, particularly to uh, young students here. Um, the way, uh, if you are interested in science, this is the way to pursue. You could be an engineer, you could be a biologist, um, you could be a material scientist, it, it really wouldn't matter what field you're in, you'll be impacted by the click chemistry because you always need to make a connection. You need to bring things together and if there's two pieces you need to bring together, there's no better, more reliable, more robust or more simple way of doing that than Barry's chemistry. And it also has gotten people inspired to think about new types of click reactions. My lab uh, studies carbohydrate molecules as their functions in immune cells at cancer. Our work is inspired by the concept of uh, clay chemistry. How could we develop a general approach that can be used by anybody to modify their own cells for cancer treatment? These tools are going to be incredible for um, diagnosing disease, for imaging, and for developing drugs. Yeah, I don't think there's any limit to the, the, what we can do with these reactions and where, the, where this kind of chemistry can go. He doesn't have kind of, you know, the ego of a person who, you know, gets a prize like this two times. There, there's really not a lot of comparators in human history. 
Barry is the only person I know who doesn't care about money and fame. He cares about uh, chemistry and his uh, students more than anything else. This is from my personal experience. You know, I, I, I suspect he's totally unfazed by this and he's probably annoyed with the extra things he has to do and would like to get back to his stockroom looking for chemicals.